Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to focus on Trappist1. The system that was very recently in the news on Google Doodle and pretty much everywhere else. Everyone was talking about it because we've discovered that this particular system has seven Earth-like planets orbiting around it. And so possibility for discovering life there is maybe, just maybe, somewhat high now. We're going to discover uh, what the system looks like in Space Engine, also what NASA thinks it looks like using their own simulation known as Eyes on Exoplanets, and we're also going to speculate and do some science. Welcome to What The Math. So first and foremost, let's actually uh, talk about misconceptions and the misconstrued facts that media uh, portrayed in its announcement. First of all, this is not a new system. We knew about TRAPPIST-1 since March of 2016. The same person who uh, published the uh, Nature paper just recently uh, found this system using a telescope in Chile um, and this particular system is located 39 light years away from us. We're going to go to it right now in Space Engine by tapping, uh, not tapping, but <laughs> typing TRAPPIST-1 right there. So let's fly to it. It's approximately 39.4 or 0.5 light years away from us. And it's a very, very, very dim, ultra, ultra cool red dwarf that is practically impossible to see. You would not be able to see this with a telescope at home. You would need to have a very specialized um, infrared telescope that only scientists have to be able to see this particular star. Now, this is what the star might look like. And we're going to accelerate time just so you can see how it spins around as well. Now, what is so special about the star? Well, first of all, it's actually not very massive. As a matter of fact, its mass is on the border of being the um, lightest possible star. This might actually be one of the lightest stars we've ever discovered. It's only about 8% of the mass of our own sun. Now, on top of that, uh, since this is such a cool star, as in like very, very cold star, it doesn't produce very much heat. So its actual habitable zone, as you'll see when I sh when I show it to you in Na uh, NASA's eyes, another software that I'll be using, um, is actually very close to it. It's essentially not too far away from where it's located. Now you can see there is like at least two planets orbiting around it already. And if I zoom out, you'll see the third one right there. These are the planets we discovered in 2016. So this is TRAPPIST-1C, TRAPPIST-1B and TRAPPIST-1D. We thought there were three planets, so we decided to take a look at this uh, particular system for um, slightly longer, for three weeks specifically, using various telescopes. And what the scientists discover is that, yes, these two planets are there, but that particular planet is actually not just one world. It turns out that this is actually three different worlds. And then they also found two more planets. In other words, this system now has seven registered planets, all of them relatively similar in mass to our planet Earth. Now, this is what Space Engine simulates this planet says. It shows them as ridiculously cold, very dark worlds, covered in, uh, you can see Aurora here, covered in the super highly um, energized particles that are striking the surface of uh, these planets from this red dwarf. Now, there's a video I'm going to be posting about why red dwarfs actually make one of the worst possible stars to find life around. In other words, I can tell you right now, even if we go to the star system, the chance for us to find either atmosphere or life on these planets is going to be very low. You're going to find out why very, very soon when you watch the other video I'm going to be posting. I don't want to spoil just yet. But let's not spoil the fun. Let's actually maybe land here and see what the surface of this particular planet looks like. There's a bit of a, uh, a bit of an atmosphere here, but not too much. And the temperature here is very, very cold, minus 230 degrees Celsius. Now that's according to Space Engine. We might have actually underestimated how much heat this star produces because it's very likely it's a little bit warmer here. Let's go to TRAPPIST-1C, uh, which is right there, and see what that planet looks like as well. Um, and then we're going to also go to the other simulation, and I'm going to show you the the much more realistic representation of these planets that NASA created, but they're not going to look as beautiful as they do in Space Engine. So we're going to just have to wait for the new version of Space Engine to come out before we can actually imagine these beautiful planets in all of their glory. Now, the thing about stars that are red dwarfs and planets around them is that usually 
all of these planets are tidally locked. In other words, the same face will always be facing the sun or the star. If I were to zoom out here, you would notice that as this planet orbits around its uh, parent star, it's always the same side that's facing it. This is a, unfortunately a problem for life. This is a problem for evolution. This is a problem for habitability of a planet. If the same side always faces the star, it means that one side is always very, very hot. One side is always very, very cold. And you can only find area with potentially liquid water right in here, twilight zone, the twilight area, because here is going to evaporate. Here is going to freeze. Here is going to be kind of okay. So all of these planets will look very, very different from what he, we kind of imagine as planets today. So that was uh, B. Let's actually take a look at C as well. C will look very, very similar. And so that's the system that we um, discovered. And um, this is the system that is creating so much excitement now. Now, 39 light years away is pretty far, but not far in terms of stellar distances. It's about 10 times as far as the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, that um, has Proxima B, Earth-like planet. Uh, but all in all, it's actually reachable. If we're going to be able to reach Proxima Centauri one day, we might as well just come here instead, because this obviously has a lot more interesting stuff orbiting around it. So as you can see, this planet is also tidally locked, unfortunately, and so Every time it orbits around its star, the same side always faces the star. All right, so now let's actually go to NASA's Eyes on Exoplanets, its own sort of proprietary free software that you can totally download um, from NASA's website as well, and take a look at how they visualize this particular system. So, first of all, uh, we're going to go to the system. Oh, actually, we're going to click right here. Look at this system with seven Earth sized planets. We're going to go to the system directly and we're going to take a look at what all of this is going to appear as. So here is the system of TRAPPIST-1. Now, um, the interesting thing about it, so if you look at the habitable zone, you'll notice that three of these planets are technically in the habitable zone of TRAPPIST-1. Now, in comparison to our own solar system, though, this is actually really, really close to the star, which creates a bit of a problem, as I mentioned before. So let's actually compare this to the solar system, and you'll see that Mercury is right there. It's very, very far um, away from the actual star that, that we have in the middle. Uh, Earth is obviously far, far away as well. So um, the farthest star here is so much closer to its parent star than Earth is to the sun. And this is because TRAPPIST-1 is actually a very, very, very cold, very small, uh, not at all massive star compared to our sun. Now, the star itself is not very cold, um, and it's so dim as a matter of fact that it will be invisible to the naked eye. And even if you use a very powerful telescope, as I mentioned before, you would not be able to see it. Uh, its uh, total brightness is 18.8, .8, if you know what this means, but basically it's very, very dim. And this is known as a super cool dwarf. Super cool, not because it's so cool that it has seven uh, planets around it, but because it's actually that cold. Um, it's, its temperature is uh, just over 2200 degrees Celsius. But because this is a red dwarf, um, what we know about the red dwarfs is that they live for a very, very long time. This star is going to live for at least four to five trillion years. That's like a thousand times longer than our sun. So, um, you know, if we one day settle on one of these planets and they become habitable, then that means that humanity can live here for a much longer time than we would be able to survive um, in our own solar system. So, we have seven planets here. Let's take a look at the visualization or visual representation of these planets in eyes on exoplanets because they look pretty cool here. Uh, so, we're going to go to Planetary View and uh, we're going to click on TRAPPIST-1b first. This is the closest planet not in the habitable zone. So this one is a little bit too hot for comfort. And as you can see, it's represented as a kind of a um, hot lava-like world. It's about 85% uh, mass of Earth. Now, this is actually a mistake. It's not 8.5%, it's 85%. And so, um, all in all, it's, it's relatively similar to Earth. Um, planet. Its uh, radius is a, bit, a little bit larger, uh, meaning that it's probably not as dense as Earth, which also suggests that it lacks the magnetosphere needed to protect it from the super, super highly energized particles coming from, from the star. Next on the list is TRAPPIST-1c, uh, and this particular planet is about 1.4 
um, 1.38 masses of the Earth, and it's relatively similar in radius. So this suggests that maybe, just maybe, this planet does have a lot of iron on the inside and has a strong magnetosphere. And if it does have a magnetosphere, it might be able to protect itself from the star. And as you can see, it's represented here as a kind of a liquidy, greenish world. But all of this is, of course, just a vis uh, visual representation. It might look completely different. It might not even have any of this. And we think that it's very likely going to have an ice cap here on the other side because all of this uh, is um, characteristics of planets that essentially have tidally locked orbits. So as you can see, it's sort of always um, facing away from the star in this particular region. All right, next one is uh, TRAPPIST-1D, and this one looks is going to look very, very cool. So this is right in the middle of the habitable zone um, in this system, and this is what it looks like. So here, it's only about 0.4 mass of Earth, but it's about 0.77 um, radius of Earth. And the water shown here, as you can see, is hypothetical. So maybe it's there, maybe it's not. For the most part, though, the side facing the star is completely dried out. It's totally dry. There's an occasional lake here and there. There's water on the twilight area. And then there's ice on the dark side. And the next planet, TRAPPIST-1e, will have very, very similar features, but it has slightly different parameters. It's about 62... Uh, percent mass of Earth, and it's about 0.9% uh, radius of Earth. So here, we seem to have more water, and this is once again just an artistic representation. It might look completely different, but of course, because there's water, there's also ice on the other side. And if I accelerate time here just to show you what it looks like, this is what it's going to look like when it orbits around its parent star. So it's always facing the Sun, or the star, uh, using the same side. And TRAPPIST-1f looks very, very similar, maybe a little bit colder because it's slightly farther away. Uh, the mass here is 68% mass of Earth, and the radius is slightly larger than Earth. And you can usually tell that because mass is smaller than Earth and radius is bigger, this means that uh, density on this planet is much lower, which suggests that it's very likely similar to Mars in that it has less um, iron and less metal on the inside, which also suggests that it might not have magnetosphere needed for life to survive on this particular planet. Unless, of course, it's underneath the ice shelf. Uh, 1G and 1H are not going to be in the habitable zone, and so 1G here is represented in a very, very unusual way. It is a terrestrial planet with the masses uh, of about 1.3 masses of Earth and a radius of about 1.13 radii of Earth, but it looks very, very gas giant-like. Now, this is, once again, artistic representation of what it may or may not, may not look like, but um, here you go. So this is what it might appear as. And uh, because of the uh, mass to radius um, ratio, you can kind of assume that it also has a lot of metal on the inside. So very likely also has some sort of a magnetosphere protecting the surface of that planet. The last one is uh, TRAPPIST-1h. We don't really know the mass of this particular object, but we know that its radius is about 75% uh, radius of our own planet. And we think that it's probably just a frozen ball of ice. Kind of looks like this. And so that's essentially the seven planets we've discovered. And it's mostly exciting because all of them are very, very similar to Earth in terms of mass. They seem to be, or at least uh, half of them seem to be orbiting in the habitable zone. So that's where you can potentially have liquid water. But because this is a, a red dwarf, and because we know red dwarfs are very, very, very unpredictable in terms of emissions and flares, and because they tend to release a lot of very powerful um, particles, a lot of x-rays, a lot of really, really destructive emissions that can actually strip the planets of the atmosphere. This still means that maybe all seven of these planets actually don't have any atmosphere, don't have any water on them, and might actually be just rocks orbiting in space. One day, maybe we'll be able to see them in more detail, but for now, that's all we know about them, and that's, that's all we've discovered. And not to spoil the fun, but there's actually quite a lot of other things that might actually prevent uh, these uh, planets from having life on them. One of them is that because they're so close together, as a matter of fact, if you were to actually stand on this planet and look into the sky, you'd probably see uh, objects size of our moon or even larger than our moon orbiting around you or orbiting close to you, that is. Um, all of these objects would be causing some huge, huge tidal effects on each other. And this, of course, means that there's a lot of volcanic eruptions on these planets caused both by the star 
and the uh, other planets around in the system. So these planets are probably very hot on the inside and constantly cause each other a lot of problems uh, via tidal effects. But anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say in this video because I just wanted to kind of briefly introduce to you what we've discovered. But we're going to go into more detail in the next video that's going to be posted tomorrow, so don't forget to come back tomorrow to learn something else about TRAPPIST-1 and this quite incredible discovery of 2017. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, and potentially share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos or wants to learn using video games. I'll see you guys in the next video, come back tomorrow, space out, and as always, Bye-bye.